For the register map and wrapping circuit of the pulse switch modulation core, we need to take a look at the general purpose output core because it's very similar. So in the general purpose output core, it outputted different digital outputs and each one of these digital outputs was either zero and one. And I believe we used about 16 of these and we connected them to the LEDs to see the values that each one of these outputs are. In the pulse switch modulation core um, case, what we have is what we call um, one bit analog signals and we can have many of them, as many as we want. And each one of them will have different voltage and we're going to connect it to different analog device and effectively it will do different um, effect on these analog devices. But for the sake of simplicity, we're going to assume that this particular core is used with the same exact device or the same types of devices. You might have several of them. and. Uh, uh, this means that we're just going to use one exact uh, switching frequency for all of them. And this is just for simplicity. Obviously, I can have each one of these outputs having its own duty cycle and its own switching frequency. But for simplicity, we're going to assume that they're all either all connected to the LEDs or all connected to motors and they have the same exact switching frequency. So this particular register maps um, assume the, these assumptions. So um, first, it actually specifies that divisor should be uh, located in offset number zero. And the divisor, if you remember, it's actually the value that specify the switching frequency or the frequency of the um, digital ones and zeros for the pulse switch modulation. And then what we do is we leave the um, bunch of registers empty or unused all the way to 10 hex. And the reason why is because all of these registers that I'm using here actually specify the duty cycle. So this one here um, specify the duty cycle for um, for signal zero. This one here is a duty cycle for signal two, one. This one here is a duty cycle for signal two, all the way here. And of course I can have all the way to 15. So total, these outputs in here can be up to 16 analog signals because, um, because I'm using this particular um, register map. Why am I pushing all these duty cycles to the bottom? Well, because all of them have this one in here, one in here, and one in here. And it will just, when I'm writing my wrapping circuit, the decoding part would be much, much easier that way. Obviously, I didn't have to do this, but I'm just doing it because it's easier and 16 seems to be an enough number. You don't have to use all 16 of them. You basically just need, um, let's say, two or three. You can just utilize the first two or the first three um, registers. We're just going to specify it as a parameter we're going to call W, and that W tells me how many pulse switch modulation outputs I have. And I believe in our implementation, we'll see about eight of them. So a W would be eight. So you can go from zero, one, two, all the way to in here, which let's say if W is eight, that means that's seven, okay, or one seven. Okay, next, um, each one of these in here, I just want you to draw um, to pay attention to that. It's actually going from zero all the way to R. So that means each one of these duty cycles that we can actually store in these places are R plus one bits. Why is it R plus one bits? Is because we want that duty cycle um, to be like if you set it to, um, to a certain value, and that value is actually going to be one zero 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 all the way, basically all the way zeros. Uh, that's basically the two hundred fifty six if we're dealing with eight bits R. Uh, this way, I will be able to get the one hundred percent duty cycle. Okay, the bottom line in this register map, what you see is divisor should go into offset zero and the duty cycle should be aligned, lower aligned to the lower half of the register map. And then also each one of these values is actually right aligned between zero and R in the lower half. Okay, so let's take a look at the implementation of this particular wrapping circuit. So here's the implementation for this wrapping circuit. It's IO pulse switch modulation core. Again, I'm providing that W as a parameter is I'm providing it the default value of six, but when I instantiate this, I could specify it whatever I want. And here I'm saying the R is 10, but again, it's a parameter, so you can have it whatever you want when you instantiate that particular core. Uh, so pretty uh, pretty um, standard signals. It has the clock. It's actually the total core, so it should have the clock and the reset and the standard interface with the MMIO controller. And of course, to the outside world, it should have these particular signals, which we call the analog signals. So taking a look at what's actually being implemented, we have a bunch of registers and signals in here. What we really do care about is the following. So we have the wrapping circuit. And if you take a look in, um, in here, what you see is actually the processor is only writing. So all I care about is decoding. There's no need for multiplexing because I'm not reading anything. And what is it decoding? Well, it has a couple of things. It's either writing the duty cycle or, or the duty basically cycle or the divisor. 
and this is why we have did this weird alignment where the divisor is living in offset zero and the duty cycles are basically 16 uh, registers down so take a look in here you see that the duty we called it an array because I have many of them if you're trying to um, if this is the core that is selected this is the chip select and I'm trying to write and the address 4 is asserted and again address 4 is actually that one in here that they all share okay if that's the case that means I'm trying to write a duty cycle so I'm gonna just enable that and if I'm actually my offset is exactly at zero and I'm trying to write that means I'm trying to write the divisor Okay, that's pretty straightforward. So you take a look in here. This one here is actually for the divisor. This one here is actually for the duty cycle. And of course, for the duty cycle, I might have many of them. So I'm gonna have to decode it based on the lower four bits of the address because the upper four bits is just exactly one. Okay, and I have used it in here. So this one here just fills it out. So what this tells me is each um, each one of these uh, core generators or pulse width modulation generator is actually having a different um, register associated with it. Frankly speaking, you'll see you'll see shortly that actually the implementation is it's basically the basic implementation. Let me just throw it very quickly in here. It's actually one counter in here and it's connected to a comparator. And that actually not a single comparator, that particular output for the counter will have different comparators, okay? And these comparators will be connected to these particular register in here and this one here and this one in here. So I'll have different comparators, but a single, a single counter for the orbits. And of course, I need the tick counter here or the prescalar counter on the top. Okay, so we take a look at the implementation in here. What I have is actually exactly the same as the enhanced design. I have the Q, the D, the pulse switch modulation to avoid the... Um, uh, to avoid uh, the uh, the glitches, uh, we take a look at the prescaler is exactly the same as the enhanced case, um, and then I have the counter. It's the same exact thing as the enhanced case, but here is where the difference is. The difference is I have multiple comparison circuits because I'm gonna have different outputs and how many outputs I have W. So parameterizing it meaning I have to use the gen var and the four loops in here. And again, these are just a bunch of comparator circuits. That's what we're replicating. We're comparing different uh, the value of the counter against some sort of a registered value. And this one here is a register. And if you take a look at the uh, um, definition, it's actually a 2D, a 2D array or a, or a memory. You can think about it. Uh, of course, uh, the pulse switch modulation, the output, um, we're just going to straight ahead, just basically um, assign it one by one. And the PWM is actually uh w w signals because this is the output analog signals and of course because we're not reading we're just going to assign the read to zero because there's no multiplexing whatsoever here